Welcome to this week's tutorial on WordPress. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can add full screen video based sliders. So we're going to work with a video from YouTube and I'm going to take you through step by step how we can do this and how easy it is, especially with the updated version, version five of Slider Revolution. So let's take a look at how we can do all that now and create really good looking video based sliders. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and set up the basics of my slider. So I'm in Slider Revolution 5 and I've got through to the point where I'm just about to set up my new slider. So what I'm going to do is set default slider. We're going to give it a name which we're going to call video for this example. And we'll give it an alias of the same. So we call that video and you can see that automatically creates the short code should we need it. We're going to come down, we're going to leave it as a standard slider but because we want the full screen, we want to go and click on full screen. Once we've done that, let's just hit save. And if we need to come back later on and set up any of the navigation things, we can do that if we need to. But I'm going to keep this simple. We're going to create one slide and I'm going to show you how we set that up as a video based slide. Now you can see our first blank slide has been created and we have our source options on the second section. All we're going to do is come down and click on YouTube video. Once we do that, we get asked for the ID of the video. And we also get asked to put a cover image in there. So if you're unsure how you find the idea or the ID of a YouTube video, simply go over to YouTube, find the video that you want to use. Um, for this example, we'll use this one. That'll do. Once you've done that, you'll see we've got the URL at the top, and then you've got watch question mark v equals, and then we've got a short code. That's the code you need to copy in. So all you do, find the video select it, choose that last little block of code that comes after the equal sign, and you're good to go. So I've done that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the relevant code into the ID section. The next option we have available is to set the cover image. Now, if at this point I try to save this, we will get a dialog box that pops up and tells us we need to save that. Oh, sorry, we need to add in a cover image. So just to show you, if I click save slide, you can see cover image needed to set for videos. So we'll say okay to that. I can't save it. So all I'm going to do is come up to either the media library or the object library. Now the media library is where I can upload files myself. The object library is a bank of files that we have available to us on the full version of Slider Revolution 5. So we're going to jump into the media library. And you can see here's all the files that I've got uploaded. Now I'm going to choose this one of the tiger because that's associated with this particular video that we're going to be looking at. So I can click on that and you can see that's a 1920 by 1080 graphic of a tiger, funnily enough. So we're going to use that as the opening screen for the video. Now what I'd recommend is to either use the first frame or the first couple of frames, whichever you want from the video that you're going to be using to embed in it. So you have that nice smooth transition from the still image, in this case, the tiger through to the actual video when you hit the, the, uh, the slide itself or create a graphic that you think represents the video well, however you want to work with it. So I'm just going to add the alt tag for our SEO purposes. And I'm going to click on insert and that's now going to put that backdrop image into our slider. So when this slide loads up, that's the first thing that people are going to see. Then it will seamlessly start playing the video that's going to be the second and third frame and so on. So you can have that nice smooth transition. Now, if we hit save, we see we've now saved that file, that uh, slide, I should say. So once we've done that, let's go and put a couple of other things onto this image to make it a little bit more interesting. So it's not just the video slide. So first of all, let's come up and let's go in and create a new layer. For this, I'm just going to put a shape in there. And all I'm going to do is just create the shape that I want. So to do that, we just have to set a couple of parameters. So I'm going to set the background of this to be yellow. So let's just go and get some color into this. Choose yellow, a nice, strong, vibrant yellowy color. That'll do, I think, for this. And we need to set up the size of it. So I want this to be a width of, let's go for 10. Let's see what that looks like. And we're going to go, yeah, that looks pretty good. And we'll go for 100, well, let's go for 150. We can always adjust this if we need to. Padding and so on, I'm not bothered about. There's no border being applied to it. So everything's looking good. So we'll say add that in. We've now got that added in. Now, if I want to change anything on this, We've got no dialog box now to go back and make any edits and I can't edit it by just adding in a new shape, for example. 
But what I do have is the ability to come back up and where we've got the style option, if we click on the advanced options to the next side of it, you can see we can go in and we can change things. So where at the moment I've got that at sort of 50% transparency and I want it to be a solid color, I can come out to this and I can now change that to be one. That will now set it as a full color. And if I want to, I can go in and adjust spaces and borders and transform it and do a lot of other different things to it. So I'm not stuck with exactly what we created. I can adjust that should I, I need to. So we've got that there. That's our first thing created. Let's now go and drop some text into this. Let's go and add another layer and click on text, HTML. And let's put some information into you. So there we go. There's our text. So what I'm going to do is confirm that. We'll roughly position it. And the next thing I want to do is create the actual style that I want to apply to this. Obviously, it's a little bit lost on there. So let's just come up through to the style again. Let's, uh, open Sans is fine as the font. Let's change the weight. Let's make it a bit thicker. Let's go for 800 on there. Uh, maybe 600. Looks a bit odd. Let's set the size and let's go for something like, let's try, let's try 60. See how that looks. And let's set the line height to be 65. So we've got a bit of space in there. That's looking pretty good. Actually, let's go a little bit larger. Let's go for 68. Just so we can get it to look like a nice heading. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, we'll go with that. So we'll set that where we want it to be. That's looking good. The next thing I want to do is just put a button in there that we're going to use to link through to the video. So if someone's interested, they can click through to either the page or in this instance, we can link it up to the YouTube video, for example. So all we need to do is create another layer. We're going to come down. We're going to add a button in there. We're going to set this to be, let's go for the same kind of color yellow as well. Background, we're going to set to be transparent. If we can, let's just set that to be zero. So it doesn't matter what color is associated with it. So that becomes transparent. Uh, we're going to go for a border. We'll set that to be one pixel. And uh, let's just give that a nice yellow border. Now, normally I go through when I copy the, the color just to make sure we've got exactly the same color on the button and the line and everything. So we've got that consistency. Actually, just thicken that up a little bit. Let's go for three. That's looking a bit better. And all we're going to do then is we're going to come in and give it some text. And we'll say view video. What we can do then is come down to the idle state again, and we can change the font if we want to. We can change it easily just by typing in the font family we want. If we want to use an icon, for example, and the relevant different buttons. Now we can obviously come in and set the over state. So let's go back in and let's go to the hover state. We'll set the background again to be zero. We want that to be transparent. The color is okay for a moment. Let's just set the border back to three. And let's just choose a slightly different yellow. Oh, excuse the weirdness. So let's just set this and choose a slightly different orangey yellow kind of thing. So there we go. So let's take our mouse over and you can see that's what that's going to look like. We can change the color of the text. Let's set that to be white. That's looking pretty good. And come back to the idle state. Yep, that's all, all fine. So once we're happy with the settings, all we need to do is click on the type of button that we want. We're going to go for this large square button. So Let's click on that one, and there we go. We can now position that where we want. We'll drop that in. Uh, yeah, underneath it is fine. So we've now got some basic elements in our slider. We've got the video set up and everything else in place. Let's just quickly position these where I want them to be. Let's just resize this a little bit. Just shrink that up a bit, just so it fits in line with the text a bit better. There we go, that's looking good. And we'll drop the button in, make sure that's in line. Okay, so we're pretty much there with the content of the slide. <coughs> As a final step, let's go through and animate some of these different actions. So let's just stagger them off so you can see at the moment we've got all our different layers set up in our timeline. So what we need to do is offset these to control the navigation. So the button's going to be the last thing that's going to come in. So let's go for the shape first. Let's bump over the text and let's bump over the button a little bit. And we can increase the duration of each of the animations. So what I'm doing is grabbing these little blocks where it says 300. And we're just changing the duration of the animation itself. So there'll be slower animating in. So there we go. We've got those set up. Now let's just go and apply the actual animations. So if we just run this through, we can see this is how things start to pan out. Actually, let's move this over a little bit further. Just so we don't have the line on right at the beginning. So you can see that comes on, 
then the line, then the text, and finally the button. So at the moment, it's using this default animation. We can change that if we want to quite easily. So we'll select in this example, the line, come up to animation. And you see at the moment it's set to fade in, which is the default transition. So all we need to do is click on that and we can choose any of the other animations. So we could just say, let's go for long from right, for example. And you see that flies in from the right hand side. We could do long from left or short from left and that'll come from the left hand side at a different speed. So we've got a range of different animations we can do. So it's just a case of finding one that you think works well for the transition that you're trying to uh, you know, sort of create. So for this one, I'm just going to use the slide mask from left. That gives a nice effect. And let's take a look what that looks like on the text itself. So let's do the same again. So we say slide mask from left. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll, we'll stick with that. We can adjust it if we want to, but that's okay. And we'll do the same then on the button. We'll just have that, we'll leave that fade in. So that looks a little different. Okay, so let's hit save on that. So we've now set up all the basics. The final thing we need to do before we can test this out is just apply exactly what we want to do for the button itself. So I'll select the button. I'm gonna come up then to actions. I'm gonna click on the plus to add a new action in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say on click, we want it to do something. So for this example, we want it to be a simple link. So you can see you've got the link URL and then we've got a couple of other options on there. The only thing we need to do is change the link type from jQuery to a link. And then we can just drop in the URL for the button. In this case, we could link it through to the video. So let's just do that. So all I need to do now is go to the link URL, paste in my link, and we've got everything set up. If you want to, you can change the targets. You can have this to open up in either the same window or create a new window or tab. Depends how you want to work with the link itself. So there we go. That's pretty much everything in place. If we now hit save, that's now saved it. So what we can do is we can take a look at what this looks like on screen. So let's check that out right now. So let's just jump over to a new tab and we're just going to paste in the link to that page and we'll hit and there we go. There's our slider. There's our animation. And you can see our video starts playing seamlessly. So there we go. That's how easy it is to create video based sliders in Slider Revolution 5. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and you'll be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.